I'd like you to think about a memory involving eating and drinking. Where does your mind go? Are you with friends or family? Are you celebrating something special? Eating and drinking is fundamental to our human survival, but it's so much more than that for most people. What would be the impact on you and your world if all of a sudden you develop difficulties swallowing? This is known medically as dysphagia and affects up to one in three people in the community, from babies and children right through to the elderly. The assessment, diagnosis and management of dysphagia is the role of a speech pathologist and my training as a speech pathologist taught me to do these very medical aspects of care well. But in my practice I felt there was a gap. There was a gap between what I'd been trained to do and what patients and carers actually needed my support with. I was often asked, for example, how to prepare a dysphagia friendly meal and this was something I really didn't feel equipped to do. It's not as simple as just putting a burger in a blender, for example. So my research seeks to understand the experiences of people with dysphagia and their families to identify then the best way speech pathology services can support them. In the first phase of my research, I've been surveying and interviewing speech pathologists about their clinical practices, and I've found that they're practicing in a very medical model, just as I was trained to do. They're very focused on the swallowing problem, the disease underpinning it, like cancer or motor neurone disease. But what's noticeably absent in their practices is consideration about the patient and the world around the patient, as well as the psychosocial impact of dysphagia. In the second phase of my thesis, I've been chatting with patients and carers in the home to understand their experiences. And it's interesting, the patients themselves are not as concerned with the dysphagia as we thought they would be. But for the carers, there seems to be a significant impact. Carers have spoken about a constant worry that they feel. What will I feed my loved one at the next meal? What do I do if they choke? And they've also talked about how their social lives have been turned upside down because they can no longer go to a restaurant and order off the normal menu. Carers are hungry for practical strategies to support the patient with dysphagia and it's not something most speech pathology services seem to be currently addressing. So my research is about finding these practical strategies. For example, I've recently led the development of a dysphagia friendly recipe book, which is set for launch next month. And I'm currently exploring the feasibility of running multidisciplinary dysphagia cooking groups, where patients and families with dysphagia can socialize with one another, they can learn new recipe ideas, and they can also access the services of speech pathology, occupational therapy, and dietetics, all in the one place. So it's about finding practical strategies to support the patients and families to ultimately make positive new memories involving eating and drinking.